that's weird. That should have been on my hold screen. Sorry, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really got to put some wheels on this chair. Okay. Steady the camera so we don't get motion sickness. There we go. Oh, hi guys. Okay, which one do I need open? Not that one, that one. And there's the live chat. A little bit of a lag again today on the live chat, but not a massive amount, so that's good. Sure, I still haven't put my rings on. I feel weird without my rings. Hi, baby. You good? Hi there. Miss Maddie saying hi. Hi, baby. Yeah. You're going to settle down now. Hey. You're going to settle down, be a good girl. You can sit under here if you want to. Sit under here with mommy. Yeah? Come on then. Uh, I was trying to find a compass. I know I've got a compass. I've got several compasses, but I can't find any of them anywhere. I don't know why. I have no idea why I can't find anything. <laughs> Do we know where anything is? No, we don't. I'm just kind of looking around, hope, hopefully, just trying to see if I can find something. No, there's no idea where it is. Okay, we'll have to improvise. <laughs> Apologise if I keep coughing weird. I woke up this morning with a I don't know if I had an asthma attack overnight or if I just like breathed in a dog hair or something, that would be equally likely. I have a light on as well, I think. There we go. Um, but I woke up earlier and every time I breathed out, when I got to, I then got wheeze. And it's still there a little bit and I'm, I keep coughing to try and shift it, but I can't shift it. So <laughs> I apologise in advance. Hopefully once I get chatty, it'll wear off a bit. Hey, Susan, Cody, Becky. Hello, hello, hello. How are we doing? So. The title of today's live is a little bit of a misnomer, marginally a little bit of a misnomer. Um, I'm not actually going to be working in my sketchbook to begin with. I might even stay not in my sketchbook, but I am in a sketchbook. Right, this is my journal. Uh, sketch journal, not really a daily journal. I do something in it every day, but I don't, it's not what you'd normally think of as a journal. Say hello, Miss Maddie. Hi. Hello. Hello, hi. How are you doing? The schnoot. Boop, the schnoot. Boop, the schnoot. You need to get down. Mwah. There you go, big belly rubs. Good girl. Um. I can't really explain what this is. I don't think I, I call it my journal because I reserve the right to write in it or do notes in it or whatever I want in it whenever I feel like it. But I do something in here every day. Uh, all my stickers. I think almost without exception, apart from a couple of commercial stickers, all of my stickers are from by bun. 
the end that's it i love her work i love her creepy aesthetic it's all creepy cute stuff i like it so it's all also it's the year of the bunny so lunar year of the bunny so that seemed appropriate and my card of the year my tarot card of the year is the sun so that also seemed appropriate uh more creepy stuff this is an actual postcard that i taped in <clears throat> obligatory pen test page i keep coming back to pages in this now this is how it's different from a sketchbook in a sketchbook i do a page and when i've finished the page i move on generally unless it's an art art journal page where it's mixed media my moleskins i quite often have half finished pages that i'll come back to but i could call this page finished in fact i considered this page was finished until i found this yesterday saying halloween's a brilliant time and i decided to stick it in here so i do go back and put things on pages um, I also have some unfinished stuff. Um, I lost the reference photo for this, but it's here. So now I've found it again. I can finish that. This is half finished. I actually just took it out of a, I got a moleskin watercolour sketchbook. I don't like cold press watercolour paper. I don't know why I keep trying to like watercolour paper. I don't like it. I like mixed media paper. I like smooth ish paper with a little bit of a grain and a little bit of a texture not too smooth sturdy but not thick and chunky like this I just don't like it so uh, I took that out I'd done that page I'm passing the book on to somebody else who will use it uh, but in the meantime uh, I had this the tracing I did the sketch and then I traced it and put it into here or onto this watercolour paper. This is the thing for the new stamp. This is from my Hobonichi, I think a couple of years ago. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's got, it's dog yoga. Well, it's not dog yoga, but it's, let me see if I can get the, let me at least attempt to get the, focus working there we go okay now you can see there we go see there's a whoops there's a little doggy every time i move the book it goes out of focus again so annoying stop it come on there we go there's a little it's bed yoga it stretches but there's a little doggy so i had to get the little doggy uh, I could actually probably zoom that in one, actually. There we go. That's a bit better. You can see a bit better now. Um, Beetle, obviously. Um, this is from my calendar this year. I got a Jane Massey art calendar uh, and I love it. It's so cute. It's all this, this little girl that is based on her as a little girl and her dog and her cat and her little brother now. She's got a little brother. Um, and this is from when Scooby passed. So we'd finished the Jan when I finished the January calendar, I decided to put it in here. Uh, sketch of Miss Maddie that I haven't finished. This is the third iteration of this. I've got two other versions of it. I was going to do one in here just in regular, either pen or pencil. Maddie, stop, baby. Come on. You've just been out. Settle. Go lie down. Just playing with my Winsor and Newtons, getting some colour on the page, testing them out. This is a page I take together because there's a there's a drawing of a peach in here and I hate it. I don't know why I hate it, but every time I look at it, I don't want to use this book. So I taped it together for now and I'll deal with it later. Uh, my iPhone 8 died. R.A.P. iPhone 8. Uh, watching the craft, drawing Nancy Downs. These are actually some stickers that I made. I made these for my patrons. Maddie, stop, please. Are you going to make me get up and open the door again? She is. She's going to make me get up and open the door again. I'll be back. She's a pain in the butt. Come on. 
Out. Come on. I don't know why you need to out. You literally just think. Come on. Every darn day she does that. Ugh. Now I'm going to try and get my chair back under. Ugh. That making you all seasick. Okay, there we go. That's why she wanted to go outside. She heard barking. She wants to go and join the pack. At least she's out there barking and not in here whining. I made these for my patrons. These were just some. Just some Bottles and things that I'd sketched and then I watercolored them. No, I didn't. I did a watercolor background that I really liked. So I took the line work and the background and I put them together in Procreate. And then I turned them into a collage sticker sheet, digital download thing on Patreon. And then I had them printed out because you have to test them, obviously. So that, well, I'll stick them in here. They were just sitting around, they were already cut out. Uh, might go back and you know do some labels on them or something when I want to practice some lettering or something like that. I don't know. I can buy myself flowers, but I'd much rather have coffee and pizza. Word. Watching Stranger Things. This is a page of quotes I liked. I have these post-it notes stuck to the desk. And when I fill up a post-it note, I've started putting it in here. Um, I was going to colour these in, but I only did one yesterday. I don't know why I didn't come back and do the others. don't remember. This page, I was going to do some mixed media on it, but this is actually all about Jupiter. So I thought I might do a Jupiter, do kind of a, you're familiar with Jose Naranja, 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 I think it is. Uh, on Instagram, he does this tiny little pocket book where he just writes about everything from sushi to fantastical creatures. You know, uh, it's like a little explorer's traveler's notebook kind of thing. Um, and I thought I might take a little leaf out of his book and do a page all about Jupiter, which, of course, will be some kind of digital download at some point if I remember to scan it hey Ruth this is from yesterday we did some um spring flowers over on patreon in our live session I do live sessions three times a week on patreon so just like this but more teachy um these I managed to salvage they look all right in the light of day I think I might do some dark in the background but they look okay this is a mess and I don't know what to do with it, but I'll think of something. I might do some ballpoint pen over the top and, and like detail out the flowers. Maybe this is my, this is going to be my out and about sketchbook, which is a Stillman and Burn Alpha, just like my big one. Hey, Mika. Last dentist one. Yay. Cool. Um. This is just a sketch, I think, from a photo or a postcard. I don't know. I had something in my hand and I liked the look of it, so I sketched it. I don't know if it was a photo or a magazine piece or a postcard or what. I just like the composition. So uh, then there's this guy. His googly eye looks like Grover from Sesame Street, and I can't unsee it. And now I'm convinced that Grover is actually an otter. blank page it's a work in progress um this is actually from a photo because it's too cold to go outside we were promised a heat wave i was excited for being able to pop on a jacket 
take Miss Maddie, go over to the big green place across the road that we begins with P and we don't mention it because she'll think we're going over there. Uh, and sitting and sketching. I thought we'd be able to go and sit and sketch, get some vitamin D, get some fresh air. No, it's too cold and it's windy. So that's not happened this week. It's warm enough to walk. As long as you're walking fast, it's brisk. Um, but it's far too cold to be sitting around Oof. But for both of us. Maddie's going to be 12 next week. So I've got to be careful about taking her out when it's too cold. Um, even this morning, I put a jumper on her to take her out. Because it keeps her joints warm. So, yeah, there's that. And then this is just a piece of... I don't know. I cut it off the bottom of something, but I liked this. I read this out on Patreon. So sorry if you're hearing this twice, but weekly trips to the local hobby shop. There we were allowed to choose any project to pursue. I remember being enchanted and overwhelmed by the rows and rows of endless possibilities. Paint by numbers sets. I can still sm smell the little squares of oil paints. Same. Uh, model airplanes, paper dolls, macrame, hooks, hook rugs, shrinky dinks, easy bake ovens, the list went on. I could easily lose myself in a project for hours on end. That was, hi, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. That's that's me. <laughs> My entire childhood. Uh, bookmark also from By Bun. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of, kind of a journal, kind of a sketchbook. You can see I do all sorts in this. I haven't really done any writing. I've been trying to get back into journaling like I used to, but no, I'm not getting very far with it. Oof, in pain. Try lying down, that might help if you're not already. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I've got a few pages in here that I can finish, a couple of pages I can add to, a couple of pages that are barely started that I can do stuff on. But I'm actually quite interested in this, um, where's that Jupiter page gone? I'm really, oh, there it is. I'm really quite interested in this. But this is color pencil, so I'm gonna put that over it. These oh hoo hoo things come with every pack of markers you buy from them and every sketchbook so I've got a ton of them in different sizes so I just cut them down to fit in my books so that I've always got one this I'll just protect that so clip there we go Oh, actually, I use this one because this, this is a really chunky book. It's like an inch thick. So I'll use this clip because it'll hold it up off the desk a bit better. Oof. I say lie down and if you nap through it, that's a bonus. Okay, I'm just going to move my captions box. I'm moving my captions box so it's not in my way. Right, Jupiter. So I always, because I'm a, I do astrology, anytime I think Jupiter, I automatically start writing about the planet in terms of zodiac signs, astrology, what it means all that kind of stuff. I thought for a change, I would do something about Jupiter itself, the astronomy, not the astrology, because I think that's interesting. And I wanted to do a nice big circle here of Jupiter, but I can't find anything that's the right size. So, hey, John. Oh, I wonder if this would work. No, see, even that's too small. Grr. I have a compass somewhere. I just don't know where it is, which is really annoying. <sighs> okay, we're gonna go for the other way to draw a circle. So I want it to be this wide, which is, ooh, six inches. Okay, that's a nice, okay, I can't use that. That's gonna keep 
scraping on the desk. Plan B is we'll do that. And then we'll pop this underneath like that. There we go. That's better. Okay, so six inches is the gap there. So let's do that. Let's do pencil. So three to nine, there we go. Eight. Two, two. Yes, I'm drawing a square. Eight. The two. Okay. How did I manage to not actually draw that line? That's weird. I sworn I drew that line. What did I do? That's weird. Okay, find the center of the square. Oops. This is six inches, so three inches will be the center line there and the center line there. We can now draw a grid across going through the center. like so. And now it's easy to draw a, square, a circle because it'll be a slightly wonky circle, but it doesn't matter. Just using the natural curve of my hand because when you do that, it naturally curves. Do that on all of these points. And then diagonally, we use those guides. Fill in. A bit tricky on this bit because it's not flat. Okay. Is this a long-winded way of drawing a circle? Absolutely. Compass is way quicker. Drawing around something that's the right size, way quicker. Didn't have either of those options. Could also just freehand it and, you know, just, I call it the willowing method because she always does it. She just goes round and round and round and round and round and eventually a circle appears and then she erases what she doesn't need. Uh, I can't do that. If I do that, everything just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually the circle would just be bigger than the page and it still wouldn't be round. So once it's on, you can actually see this is too pointed here. So this needs to be shallowed off. That is not too bad, actually. This is a little bit too pointed here. There we go. Does that that feels about right to me? I think. Okay. 
Now, at the moment, it still looks terrible because we've got all the straight lines there. So your eye is going, oh, well, that doesn't look quite like a circle. That doesn't look right. That, but when you erase the lines, excuse me, the camera's going to jiggle a little bit while I erase. Don't erase often, so you don't have to worry about it. But yeah, sorry. My camera is attached to my desk, so if my desk moves, so does everything else. Mm. I don't know if I'll leave the ed the border. I might leave the border. I might not. Okay. Now it looks like a circle. See? Magic. All right. I think we should start with a picture of Jupiter, shouldn't we, really? I do believe I saved one yesterday when I had this idea. Oh, I've even got a page open on Jupiter. There we go. There she blows. That to be Jupiter. So not too hard to paint, I don't think. Should be fairly easy. I'm going to put this on here so that it's not got any glare on it. I can't fit it in the shot as well. I'm sorry. It, it won't fit. Um, but, you know, I'm assuming if you want to play along, you can find a photo of Jupiter. Uh, in fact, I can tell you what page it came from that I took this. It's from space.com. Space.com has a whole section on Jupiter. A guide to the largest planet in the solar system. So there you go. Um, so actually, I think I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start by putting on this corner. Oh. Yep, that pen doesn't want to work. Choose this one. Current favorite pen. This is a Copic Multiliner 0.3. I want some more of these. They're, they're really nice to work with. Space dot com. So I know where the info came from. Uh, and I'm going to lightly very lightly sketched in the circle I just drew in pen. I'm not I'm not hard lining it. I'm just I've got it on the side and I'm sketching it in. So it'll look a bit less harsh. Bonus, it always also makes it look like you can freehand a circle. <laughs> We can't freehand a circle. There's very few people who can freehand a circle. But I want to be able to erase the pencil lines so I can paint it. Or whatevs. There you go. Let that dry a second. So. That's a very small amount of space to add things in, but I think we can do it okay. Uh, I'm going to use my red pencil to underline important bits in this so that I don't, well, not so that I don't, but then I know what's in here and then I don't have to read. I don't have to write Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system because it says Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system, right? So largest planet, brightest, 
uh, has a famous red spot. The giant, it's a gas giant actually. Uh, Jupiter is a frozen mass, frozen gases. Frozen gases lying under a cloud cover that consists almost entirely of substances which procure, preclude the possibility of life as we know it. So no carbon based or O2 breathing things. The red spot near Jupiter's icy equator. 200 million square miles inside, 200, 200 million square miles, 200 million square miles. It's a lot of red spot. Uh, according to oh, the SAS, uh, the red spot near Jupiter's icy equator covers an area of about 200 million square miles, according to the gentleman who professed to be able to measure such things. <laughs> Burn. The red spot is shrinking. Yes, it also, it doesn't move with the planet as it rotates. It never moves. So it's not on the planet. It's in the atmosphere. Hey, Casey. If that estimate is correct, it means the single feature on Jupiter is larger than all the continents on the Earth combined. Wow, that's big. But the mass of Jupiter is bigger than all the other planets combined, so that's not entirely surprising. What does With such an atmosphere, what does that bright red spot consist of? It is some kind of substance that has coagulated. Ooh, it sounds like blood. That's a good bit of writing. The red spot has coagulated. Oof. Nice. Uh, or some strange life form that is flourishing in the frigid atmosphere. The question brings us to still another riddle regarding Jupiter. The principal marking on it, the largest of the red spots, has been clearly visible since 1949. The, the planet rotates every 10 hours. But the big red spot is not rotating. Therefore, it has to be something in Jupiter's sky. I knew that. So what does the bright red spot consist of? Has been clearly visible since 1949. The planet rotates every 10 hours but the big red spot is not rotating. So it's something in Jupiter's sky. Very cool. I like that. I feel like I need to do something here. Oh, I use this pencil actually. Uh, let's put the big Red Ooh, that's not a do p but there we go uh. Should be able to erase this now. So I need to do this fast and I'm going to turn the camera thing to the holder screen for a second. Uh, if I can find the holder screen, I'm just going to put the, the holder screen on for a second while I rub this out. It's going to take ages if I try and do it without wobbling the table. Be right back. See, 
much quicker. <laughs> and you didn't get seasick in, in, as a bonus. Uh, okay, so. Got some. Yeah. Got some eraser crud stuck in my. Eh. There we go. Now, obviously, this is my journal. I'm not going to do a super detailed sketch, a super detailed painting or anything. I'm just going to rough it in. It's pretty easy. Um, mostly kind of, I mean, if you squint your eyes at it, you can see it's mostly kind of a beigey colour with a couple of white stripes, a couple of red stripes. This is kind of a swirly thing, almost like when you get the hooks forming on volcano, oh, volcanoes, hurricanes, uh, and then the red spot and whatever this blue thing is up at the top, which I don't know, but I have a fun idea for that. So I think I'll just use my matte acrylics today. I can't be, can't be bothered with waiting for things to dry. So this mushroom color should be exactly the color I need to do the base coat. It'll dry nice and fast, and then we can just throw some other colours on top where we need them. Uh, let me grab, oops, <laughs> grab that one. Oh, I didn't shake that very well. Let's try that again. Okay, that's better. Okie dokie. Painty, painty. Yeah, see, that's perfect colour. This sketchbook is an art alternative sketchbook. Uh, it is the same brand that, and the same paper, in fact, exactly the same paper weight and everything as the big stupid 600 page sketchbook, uh, which I also have. I haven't really started that one yet, but it is something I've got written down to work on. Might be st something I start working on soon actually, because I've got a lot of bits and pieces in the works. I would like to, I don't know if I've mentioned. Um, so what I want to use the big 600 page sketchbook for is to create like a catalogue of my art pieces. So as I have ideas about what I want to do, put the ideas in there, sketch them out, you know, and as I use that page, you know, or as I create the piece, um, using paint swatches or, you know, maybe off cuts of bits of the collage that I use. Putting them on the page, kind of like a, well, like a swatch page, I suppose, for that specific piece. And then eventually, you know, making notes, all that kind of stuff as I work on pieces. And then eventually when I finish a piece, taking a photograph of it or printing it out, and putting a copy in the book um, with the idea that eventually I want to start selling some of my finished pieces. I find it very difficult to let go of my art. Um, unless it's, if it's a commission, it's not hard to get rid of because it's not mine. Um, but if I painted it because I wanted to paint it, then it's hard for me to let go of it. But eventually, <laughs> I would like to start selling some of them. Um, and I've been looking into how to price them and stuff like that, because it's so hard to know how to price things. You look at one person on Etsy and they're selling 
a piece the size that I paint for like 25 quid and it's really detailed and then you look at somebody else and it's like three paint strokes of an abstract and they're selling it for 400 pounds and you're like how am I supposed to make any sense of this uh but I had a I watched a video of no yeah there goes the name completely gone out of my head completely gone it was a it was a reel on instagram the other day that i watched by a really good painter and she gets very attached to her work as well because it's it's personal for her it, every piece is personal um and she said if you don't want to sell your art or if you find it hard to let go of your art sell it for a price that you don't think anybody will ever want to pay so whatever you think is a reasonable price double it or triple it or whatever depending on how much you love the piece and don't want to get rid of it because if somebody really genuinely wants it for that price and you know that it's overpriced because you don't want to get rid of it then you know that the person really loves that piece and is going to look after it I was like oh that's cool especially for somebody who doesn't really want to oh, I do want to sell it but I don't want to sell it I don't really want to sell everything I just want to make more room because I'm starting to get to the point where I don't have any space for anything anymore. I've got a lot of pieces that are fully finished and varnished and just sitting in a box over there waiting to have, I got some tags to put on them, to put them up on the wall. And I want them in my art space. I, I want them in my studio on my walls, but also I want to sell some. So I've got space for some more. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. Let's have another look at this. So the red spot is actually bright orange. Like bright orange, it's not red, it's bright orange. This is all kind of burnt sienna kind of colors. This has got kind of greens and blues in it swirly almost like marble look how pretty that is I mean I could go I would be happy to go into detail painting this like really fine detail I might even do that as a like an oil paint study or something just because I can um I don't know what this blue is I'll have to check on the website before I put that in but I think a lot of this bit I can do in pencil over the acrylic but I want to put some of this in so let's start with that big white band so halfway down, this band is across the equator. And then it's got track lines on either side. That's where the red dot is. And then just above, it's got white stripes as well. So I'm going to do it like that. Let's... Mm, what's going to be the easiest way to do this? Let's just put the white in. It's a sketch doesn't have to be perfect it's a sketch if I want to do it oh I can't get that lid off why can't I get that lid off I thought I got the lid off the other day okay hang on gotta... nope Ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. It's not that bad. Why didn't it not? Why did it not want to open? It's kind of weird. Okay. So, if that is the band across the middle, roughly. About there. Okay. Kind of there. Yeah. 
And then, where's my burnt sienna? Oh, ink. I don't know about this ink on this paper, but I do have acrylic down. So it should, it will it'll take a little minute to dry, but it should work fine. Let's grab a palette. I love this colour. I use it so much. It's Liquitex Transparent Burnt Sienna. And it's this beautiful orange colour. Which I think is just about the right colour for... This. Okay, let's get a... Where's my cloth gone again? I keep moving it around the desk. There! Ah! Whoops. Craft a lounge. Okay. So we've got this kind of like a straight line. Not really a straight line, but kind of like a a band. Have some bits here. And then we got the big red spot right there. Maybe a little too low, but that's okay. Again, it's a sketch. We're just throwing it in our journal. Okay. And then across this bit, it literally looks almost like it's braided. So I'm gonna do it in swirls like that. And then there's a there's a line of white and there's another line of red up there. And there's a couple of patches down here. A couple of little bits and pieces up here. And then we'll grab the white again. Well, this is still damp. And we'll do, this is the white bit here. So I'm gonna mix it up into this bit here. And then there's a big white piece around the thing that looks like it's a, looks like it's swirling that way. It looks like it's turning anti-clockwise, like a, the hook of a hurricane almost. Colour in a few of these, spread that about a bit. Same here. This looks much more like an actual band across the top. And then we've got some lighter bits, darker bits. Spread it all around, get some more white. There's a lot of white just here. Again, in that kind of swirly effect. And then we've got these big hook and eye type things coming up like this almost, big one there. And then this is all white, so we can paint that bit in. There we go, that'll do. Oh, hold on, I missed a bit. I've painted this spot a little bit too low, it should be a bit higher, but that's okay. There is a bit coming across here that trails off. And there are two 
white spots just there. Clean that lid, I think. In there, so I remember. So there we go. There's a. It's not bad, is it? I mean, it's close enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, once that's dry, I'll add a little bit of colour pencil just to add the kind of greeny bits. There's some green bits across the middle here that are really interesting. Um, and and I'll call it a day on that. Uh, I'll also do a little bit of shading. Um, you can see quite clearly that it's because of the photograph, it's actually shaded all around this edge, but it's also shaded a little bit here. It's kind of shaded this way. So the sun must be coming from this end angle. Uh, so I might put a little bit of shade on it as well. What else? Okay, I think I'm I think I've painted as much as I want to paint on there. So let's look at the page and see what we can find out. How many how many moons does Jupiter have? No googling. How how many moons does Jupiter have? I thought about seventy five ish. I knew it was over seventy. It actually has seventy nine moons that they know of so far. Do you know what the classification of a planet is as opposed to a dwarf planet? like Pluto got downgraded to, or a rogue planet. Do you know the difference? I'm showing my nerdiness here now because guess what I studied when I was at uni? Well, the uni I went to, you did a foundation year where you did a bit of everything, and I studied astronomy for a year. <laughs> so I know about weird stuff like Doppler effects and things. Um. What were we talking about? I was trying to read and talk at the same time. Can't do that. Oh, yeah. Classification of planets. So a planet, when we call something a planet, we mean a roughly spherical object that has its own gravitational mass. And generally it is in orbit around something else. And that planet, if it's in orbit, has generally moved things out of the way or attracted things to it and absorbed stuff or it has its own moons not all planets have moons but generally larger pieces of debris that have been cleared out of the way end up in the orbit of the planet etc so general is a planet now there are giant planets and there are planets giant planets uh, I can't remember how many, but they have to have so many moons and a gravitational pull above a certain amount to be classed as a giant planet. We've got Saturn and Jupiter in our um, uh, solar system, which is uh, gas giants. So that doesn't mean that they're all gas. It just means that an awful lot of it you know the planet itself might not be as big as it looks because an awful lot of that is actually gas in the atmosphere then we got ice planets which are really cold uh neptune uranus and once upon a time pluto but they downgraded pluto you know why they downgraded pluto to a dwarf planet it's no longer a planet it's a dwarf planet because it hasn't cleared any debris out of its way. Therefore, it's not a real planet. I'm going to go out on a limb and say if you wanted it to not be a planet anymore, maybe you shouldn't have called it a dwarf planet. I mean. Am I wrong? Is dwarf planet not still a category of planet? But the IAU or UAI or whoever it is won't classify dwarf planets as a subcategory of planets. They refuse, even though they've called them planets. Because they said, and I quote, dwarf planets are not planets. Okay, then. Anyway, 
Pluto's a damn planet, okay? <laughs> this is planet in the name, it's a planet. <laughs> it might be a dwarf planet, that's fine. A giant planet, a gas planet, a rogue planet, a dwarf planet, that's fine. But if it's got planet in the title, then it's a planet. If you didn't want it to be called a planet, don't put planet in the title. So Pluto's a dwarf planet, small but dense, feisty and mighty. Um, still a planet, thank you, yeah. So that's that's the difference between the gaseous giants, the frozen planets, the ice planets, and the dwarf planet. They're talking about labeling Chiron as a dwarf planet, even though it's an asteroid, because it fits the criteria of a planet, a dwarf planet. Don't even get me started on that. The rogue planets, here's a fun one. Rogue planets are not linked to a specific solar system. They're like comets and stuff. They just zoom all over the place. Now, that doesn't mean that they don't have a center of gravity that they're orbiting around. It's just that they're not a part of a particular system. The word planet is starting to sound weird after all the repetition. It does. Any word that you say over and over and over again starts to sound weird. Planet, Janet. Um, so, what can we find out about Jupiter? Jupiter's the large part in the solar system, fifth from the sun, gas giant, da da da, named after the king of the gods in Roman mythology, king of the planets, has a giant red spot, twice the width of, width of Earth. So, that spot is twice the width of Earth. That's a scientific thingy. Let's put that in. So drop a line here and drop a line here and we'll drop a line at halfway and we'll put a little circle in there. I don't trust myself to draw a circle the right size, which is why we have these. Ugh. Okay, circle, too big. Too big, uh, a little bit too small. There we go, just right. Okay, so I'm gonna we'll make that look vaguely green and blue, and then that will be Earth. Hmm. Oh, I could have just drawn that in pen, didn't I? Which one did I use? That one. Yeah. Earth. Just write Earth next to it so we, I don't forget later. <laughs> okay. Help to revolutionise the way we saw the universe and our place in it. 1610, when Galileo discovered Jupiter's four large moons. Okay, so there's a bit about the moons. Let's put... Uh, let's put moons. Seventy-nine moons, four largest are Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Discovered sixteen ten by Galileo Galileo.
These observations are the first time that celestial objects were seen circling an object other than Earth and supported the Copernican view that Earth was not the centre of the universe. Um, discovered for the largest, uh, discovered 16 times by Galileo, proved that Uh, oh, writing along the gap. Copernicus heliocentric sun in the center version of the universe was correct. Okay. Since 2016, the NASA spacecraft Juno has been investigating Jupiter and its moons. Well, of course she is, because, fun fact, all of Jupiter's moons are named after young girls that he had dalliance and some boys, actually. Young girls that Jupiter, in the mythology, had dalliances with. Juno is Jupiter's wife. So that when they sent a probe to look at all the moons of Jupiter, get all the tea, who did they send? His missus. I love that. Who says scientists don't have a sense of humour? So Juno, since, 19, since 2016, Juno's been investigating the moons and planets. Okay. I feel like it would be fun. Oh, I wonder. Let's let's find out what it looks like first. Juno, Juno probe. NASA. Let's find out what ye olde Juno probe looks like. Images. I think it's that three pronged thing that's kind of like a TIE fighter, but. It is. It's a three pronged thing that looks a bit like a TIE fighter. Yes. OK. That's a good one of it. Let's save that. So we'll draw, feel like where's, there she is. I feel like we could put her here. So if we draw, there's the circle, she's got spikes coming out like that. Got pointy bit there. We can write about Juno 2016 NASA moons. So we can write that in there. Okay. This is fun. I haven't done one of these pages in, in my journal in years. I don't even remember the last one I did. I think it was an artist. Yeah, I think it was a contemporary artist that I really liked her work. Okay, 2016, Juno. Jupiter is more than twice as massive as all the other planets combined. Immense volume could hold 1,300 Earths. If Jupiter was the size of a basketball, Earth would be the size of a grape. Wow, that really puts it in perspective. Okay, I feel like we could maybe put that here. Uh, let's do this. If 
Uh, I don't have enough room to write Jupiter, so I'm going to use the astrological symbol. If Jupiter was a basketball, Earth would be the size of a grape. Which really kind of puts it in perspective, just from the way I've drawn it. If Jupiter was a basketball, Earth would be the size of a grape. This red spot is about the size of a grape. And that's two widths of the Earth. So all of that little bit of information gives you so much context of how big things are. Um. Jupiter mass equals more than all the other planets combined. And Jupiter's mass equals thirteen thousand times. Earth's mass. I feel like that needs to be highlighted in red because that's like a, a major thing. So that's, mm, I don't like that. I might go over that in paint or something, but that's, that's the start. Okay. The first planet to form in the solar system made up of gases left over after the formation of the sun. If the planet had been about 80 times more massive in its development, which in spatial terms is nothing, it would have been a star in its own right. Wow. Uh, okay, where can we put... Okay, we've got the distance to the sun. So let's put let's put a sun up in this corner, shall we? The sun. Uh, no, actually, I'll use this, I'll use the symbol for the sun, but I'll actually I'll still use the circle template. We've got the circle templates. Use the circle templates. So we'll put the symbol for the sun in there. Uh, so we can do the, yeah, we can do the, the, the line of planets. Okay. Not to scale, I suspect. I, I mean, we could find it, couldn't we? Let's see if we can do it to scale. Um, solar system distances to scale there we go mm, there we go okay so 
<laughs> my sun and Jupiter just happen to line up. Okay. So this is Jupiter here. I'm just going to eyeball it. So the sun comes out to there. And then we've got. Hmm, I don't think I can actually eyeball it. I'm going to. Let's line it up that way and use a. Whoops. Shifting it around. Oh, that book's moving it that way. There we go. OK, so let's line Jupiter back up there. There's the edge of the sun. There's Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Saturn, Uranus. Oh, they're actually big planets, aren't they? Make them big planets. Neptune. Where's Pluto? It's written there. So where is it? Moon's not shown. What blinking heck is Pluto? Pluto and Chiron. Okay, we're going to have to find another one. Solar system distances to scale including Pluto, the dwarf planet. Don't at me. Uh, images. That one's got Pluto on it. There we go. Okay, it's upside down. Oops. Maddie. Okay, so... Uh, that's Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Uh, this is not the same scale. What the hell? Okay, I'm going to eyeball it. Um, the distance between Saturn and Uranus. That's not what they had on the other one. Saturn to Uranus, Uranus to Neptune, Neptune to Pluto is about the same distance. So they lied on the other one. So that's that's where Neptune's going to be. And then Pluto and Chiron are out here. So, Chiron, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, no, nope. Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury. There we go. Let's that isn't very red. I want red red. Oh, I've got a I've got a red ball point. Hang on. Oh, this will do. Here we go. This is waterproof. I'll use my Hobonichi pen. There we go. So we can draw that right the way through those planets like that. 
Okay. Oh, there's loads of other dwarf planets, but if I put in all the other dwarf planets, I won't have any room here to write about anything else. <laughs> I'm only going out as far as the named. I mean, they've all got pet names, but and they've all got numbers, but I'm only going as far as the named dwarf planets. Okay, where's that Jupiter guide gone? Uh, keeps taking me back to the beginning of the page. It's very annoying. Hi, baby. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, distance from the sun. That's what I was going to do. Uh, so we could write that in red, actually. So it's 480. Where's the numbers? 480 million miles. 480 and a half million miles, but I'm gonna put 480 million miles. at aphelion or the furthest distance that Jupiter reaches from the sun because planet or orbits are ellipses, not circles. Uh, furthest away is 507 million miles. So 507 million miles at its largest. And 480 is its lowest. Okay. So down here in the Earth comparisons, we can put Jupiter is five times further from the sun than earth brackets average because the ellipse of the earth and the ellipse of the jupiter's orbit are not the same yeah. is jupiter a gas giant yes but it's not all gas gets hotter and denser the deeper you go we need to write gas giant somewhere we haven't put the title in yet have we we haven't got anything that says jupiter how about if we put that down here how about if we put J U P I T E R J U P I No, nope, I'll write it down, it's easier. U P -E -R. So that's the center. Okay. So let's do about there. About halfway across is there, so that's where the eye is going to go. P E R J U P. Might do that in red actually. And then we have um, uh, 
the gas giant. And under here, I'll put first formed planet in our solar system. Okay, what's the big red spot? Nobody really knows, da da da, it goes anti-clockwise. Oh, okay, the famous giant red spot is a vortex, technically an anti-cyclone because it rotates anti-clockwise in Jupiter's Southern hemisphere. This vortex is big enough to swallow the earth twice over the winds that whip around its edges do a good job of keeping calm air inside the vortex separated from turbulent stormy air outside. Calm air in the interior gets cooked by the ultraviolet light of the sun, creates chemicals, da da da, reflected back. That's why the red spot looks like it's red. Has been around since the at least the Victorian era, almost two centuries ago, but has been steadily shrinking in east-west extent for much of that time so it's going that way which if it's spinning would make sense because it would be you can still see like the hook of the cyclone so if it's still spinning then it would be becoming circular wouldn't it interesting Uh, I feel like I want to write about the red spot. Let's put that here. The red spot is an anticyclone vortex in the southern hemisphere. Uh, at least two centuries old, but shrinking. East to West. Packing a lot of information into this page. I'm really enjoying this. It's been a long time since I've done this kind of stuff. Uh, air gets cut. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, we've read that bit. Uh, is there a planet bigger than Jupiter? Almost certainly, but not in our solar system. Jupiter are the gas giants, Uranus and Neptune are the ice giants. And the exoplanets, more than 5,000 at last count. There are evidence of larger planet, planets, which are puffed up because they're really close to parent stars. Interesting, but not really anything to do with Jupiter. Okay, why is Jupiter called a failed star? Made of the same stuff as the sun. Ah, because they're gas giants. Gas giants are basically made up of the same stuff as the sun, hydrogen and helium. But they had a little bit more material. If Give them a, lot, a bit more material and they could ignite a nuclear fusion of hydrogen to form a star. Uh, but it would have to be about 80 times bigger. Okay. Jupiter's environment. 
Do I care about that? Oh, it's only a possible interior structure. They don't really know what it looks like. Mostly hydrogen and helium. Planet's atmosphere, upper winds of 335 miles per hour. Woo! It's windy. Magnetic Earth, the magnetic pull of Jupiter is 20,000 times the strength of Earth. Numbers don't mean anything to me at this point. They're just too big. They don't, they don't mean anything. Oh, the Star Tracker camera aboard NASA's Juno spacecraft captured this view of Jupiter's faint rings. Oh. It's the first ever view of the planet's rings from inside of them. The bright star above the main ring is Betelgeuse, and Orion's belt can be seen in the lower right. Okay, come on. Stop loading adverts and just show us the bit. That was the bit we want to see. They lied. This does not show what they said it showed. And now my screen is messed up. Pause. You are not paused. Okay. What is the great red spot? Oh God, this page. Let's drive me insane. Here we go. What is the oh that's a good close-up of the spot? Look at that. I like it. A giant hurricane storm, hurricane-like storm that's lasted more than 300 years. According to NASA, oh, I can't get the lid off this pen. According to NASA, the great red spot at its widest is twice the size of Earth. We know that. And its edge spins counterclockwise around its center at speeds of 270 to 425 miles per hour. Oof, that's fast. Was it an anti-cyclone? The colour of the storm varies from brick red to brown. Uh, been shrinking for some time. The colour indicates it may come from small amounts of sulphur and phosphorus in the ammonia crystals in Jupiter's clouds. Jupiter has many other storms. According to 2022 data from Juno, Jupiter's Polar cyclones are driven by convection or heat rising from lower altitudes to the higher atmosphere, similar to the way ocean vortexes work on Earth. OK. Let me put this here. Wind speeds. Of 270 to 425 miles per hour.
Jupiter has a mind-boggling 79 known moons named after the paramours and descendants of the Roman god of the same name. His dalliances. The largest moon is Ganymede. Oh, Ganymede is the largest moon in our solar system. Bigger than both Pluto and Mercury. That's... Okay, the, Jupiter's biggest moon is bigger than Pluto or Mercury. Wow. Okay. Uh, let's put that down here with the moons. Ganymede is the whoops, largest moon in the solar system larger than Mercury or Pluto. The only moon known to have its own magnetic field, which emits an eerie sound through the layers of ice. Well, now we're going to have to do a whole page on Ganymede because that sounds fascinating. <laughs> Io, Io is the most volcanically active body in our solar system. It's the second largest moon. Europa is made of ice water. It may hide a liquid ocean that contains twice as much water as Earth's oceans. It has underwater volcanoes. How do you have underwater volcanoes in ice? I I, okay. Uh, Callisto has the lowest reflectivity or albedo of the four Galilean moons. This suggests that its surface may be composed of dark colorless rock. Once considered a boring counterpart to the other Galilean moons, Callisto's heavily cratered surface may con conceal a secret ocean. Oh, there's the Jupiter rings. OK, we have got a picture of Jupiter's rings. They're not terribly exciting. They're just there. Three faint rings discovered by Voyager in 1979. Uh, I'm not so interested in the rings, but I'll make a note of them. So, Maddie, stop. Stop. Let's make a note of them over. Okay, we're going to do NASA and Juno there. Uh, let's do 1979. Voyager 1 discovered that. Jupiter has three faint rings of gas. Oh, a Jupiter flyover from NASA's Juno. Is it going to play this time, do you think? What do we reckon? This is all on that same page, space.com, Jupiter. Oh, it is moving. It's very slow, but it is moving. Maddie. Maddie, stop. Oh, this page is doing my head in. Okay. If you want to watch it, you're going to have to go and watch it on something other than this page. 
because every time I try to play something, it just jumps back to the beginning. <coughs> oh, we do actually have pictures of where the, the moons are. That'll be handy for... So Europa is there, Ganymede, Io. These are shadows. Aren't they four? Where's Callisto? Hmm. Bum, bum, bum. Callisto. NASA's Juno mission arrived in Jupiter in 2016 with an intended lifespan of 20 months. But as of 2022, it continues to return images. <laughs> Juno is on a mission, guys. <laughs> She's going to find out about every single one of those moons. Its mission is now extended until 2025. Like, yeah, just, just, you go, girl. Stay out there. You go. Nine missions have flown to Jupiter. Only two missions, NASA's Galileo and Juno, have orbited the planet. And it's got a history of different space flights. Ooh, look at that photo. A multitude of swirling clouds in Jupiter's dynamic North Temperate Belt, captured in this image from NASA's Juno spacecraft. Wow, that is gorgeous. I, I would paint that. That's incredible. Wow. Save image. I love that. Studying the polar orbit, da da da, da da da, about the scientists, some of the photos of the moons, Thebe and Metis. Um, this is getting into too much information. It's it's. We're going into rabbit hole territory now. Uh, Jupiter's atmosphere grows warmer with depth, reaching room temperature or 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius. At an altitude where the atmospheric pressure is 10 times as great as it's on Earth. Oof, that make your ears pop. Enough water to support life, but there is no evidence of it yet. Mm. The moons. Do have the potential to support life. Interesting. Mm. Bibliography written by Charles Q. Choi. There we go. OK, I think that's enough information i don't want to go crazy nerdy i think i would like to add it, now it won't refresh now it doesn't want to refresh it, it would refresh earlier but now it doesn't want to okay let's find the space missions again I'll write those down. Oh, okay, that all oh, that's disappeared. Here we go. Uh, space missions is down here somewhere. Here we go. So nine missions to Jupiter. Let's 
seven flybys. Pioneer 10 and 11. Maddie, Voyager 1 and 2. Ulysses. Vicini. And New Horizons. Can we have a new? Can we have an Animal Crossing in space? That would be well. I suppose technically it's in space, isn't it? It would be fun though. <laughs> Only two orbiting missions. Okay, now those are the important ones. So Galileo, when was Galileo? 90s, mid 90s? <laughs> First orbiter, orbiter Galileo arrived in 1995. Oh, that was a good guess. Maddie, shush. Orbiting missions, 1995 to... Uh, eight years, five, 2003, 2003, Galileo, and then 2016 to 2025 if they carry on with where it is at the moment Juno there's Juno we can have George Juno in this corner we've come full circle um Juno's mission is to observe and photograph all 79 moons, brackets, paramours. Yes, that's right. They sent, oh, they sent his wife to check out the girls. Because <laughs> I think that's funny. Sorry, I do. Okay. Juno. We had a picture of Juno, didn't we? Did I download it? I think I did. There she is. So I'm just going to get that in ballpoint pen, I think. I'm just going to switch the camera off a second while I erase this so I don't give you a headache. Be right back. There we go. Mm, maybe I'll sketch it in pencil first, just so I can get it to the right dimensions. Okay, so we've got this down here. This is going off, that's the center. This is going off at that angle.
This one is coming towards us. So that one would be a bit more at that angle. This has a weird thing on the front. These are plates. That is a platform. These are plates. There are four on this arm. There are four plates on this arm. Nope. And we've got this big old platform thing right here with a small cylinder here and then a much bigger circle around the top of it like that with a diamond formation over the top. Various bits of hunky dory and boxes and things and robes and stuff. There we go. Okay. Uh, actually, I think I'll draw it with this. It'll look better, I think. It'll match the rest. So. You can hear a gate banging. It better not be our gate. <laughs> No, it's next to us. Okay. We've got a bit of dark around here. You're all very quiet today. You're just listening to me bumbling away in the background. <laughs> Let's draw a couple of bits of probes and machinery and blocks and whatever else, some weird stuff here. And there we go. Then we've got this platform coming out here. And that oil. the pretty diamondy thing on the top. You didn't sleep well last night. Oh, so we've we've got the, the live zombie crew. <laughs> zombie crew has infiltrated the live stream. Okay, so these are all individual squares. held together with, who knows, could be sticky tape for all I know. Yeah, this giant platform coming out here. And then we've got two platforms there coming out. The me doodad on the front. I assume that's the front. I'm assuming that would be the probe where the camera is. I don't know. And then over here, we've got another square there, a square there, square there square there, 
also held together with sticky tape. There we go. I love my ballpoint pens, but they don't work very well on this paper for some reason. Not sure why. So they work really well on everything else. Maddie, stop, please. Okay. Uh, that's dry now. That wind is picking up out there. Okay, I think I'm going to use. Didn't sleep well either. Oh, it's the new moon, solar eclipse playing tricks with everybody. Using time to get ready for your afternoon lessons. Set up for the end of semester. Oh, God, the end of semester. I used to live for those days. End of semester is nothing to be joked about. Back in here, just covering your keyboard in blob cutouts. Excellent. Why not? <laughs> OK. 
think this, since this colour goes with it so well, I think I'm going to use, oh, I'm gonna need a bit more than that because that's a giant air bubble. There we go. I'm actually going to, there's that really tiny brush. Here we go. Super, super tiny brush. I was using this to paint eyes the other day. Look how tiny it is. <laughs> I need to get some more. It's a Prince Art 3 over 0 round. I don't know what that means, though. Three hairs, maybe? I'm not sure. Uh, okay, I'm going to start up here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this line in. Here. Okay. Let's color the sun in. Let's do. The hi, baby. We're getting too windy out there for you. You don't have to sit outside, you know, you can come in. The big stop. Mommy's working. Shush. Red. Oh, why don't I sit and do this more often? This is so much fun. Just filling my need. You know when you have that need to move your hand in a journaly way or oh, writey yeah. way, but you don't have anything you want to write about particularly? Maddie, stop. Enough. Don't be a brat. Go and lie down. You want to do it and you're itching to do it, but you just don't have anything to do it about or you, anything you want to particularly write about. And that's how I feel at the moment. Like I'm fulfilling that that nerdy need in me to be writing things down. <laughs> oh, does that make any sense? I don't know. I can't be the only person who has that. I mean, a lot of people get it when they want to draw, but they don't know what to draw. But I get this nerdy need to just make pretty pages about stuff that feels like journaling, but it's not really journaling, you know? I should do this more often. To you all the time. Okay, Katie does it. Okay, I'm I'm good with that. Okay. Uh let's do let's all do the titles in this. I like this colour. I might as well use it, right? Uh, moons. And then we've got the header here itself. I just like doing research, I guess. But now I've done this, you see, the, the, here's, the, here's the extra. Now that I've done this on Jupiter, there are nine other planets I can do. <laughs> because Pluto is a planet, okay? And so is Chiron. If they're dwarf planets, they're planets.
my professor, my physics professor would be so happy that my astronomy year is not going to waste. I really enjoyed doing astronomy. It was so much fun because it wasn't maths. We didn't have to do maths. If there was maths involved, they gave you the numbers. It was all equations and stuff. You didn't have to do any maths calculations. And if you did, they were pretty easy. Okay. I just happen to have one of my bit pens here. So I think what I'm going to do, even though this is not deep enough to dip my dip pen into, I'm going to just sure give it a good go. Let's see if we can do that. And What would your job have been in ancient Egypt, scribe? <laughs> okay. That bled a little bit. I might have to outline that, but that's okay. Let's do... Oops. Sorry, that clunking noise is my bracelet catching on the desk. I don't normally have to dip this pen quite so many times. It's just that I'm not actually dipping it in the ink. I'm just getting tip coloured because I'm too lazy to undo the bottle and do it again and dip it in there. So I'm not actually getting a full load on the ink of the ink. That's the problem. It can actually write for about 20 minutes without needing re-dipping, which is pretty impressive, actually. Maddie. Okay. Uh, Seventy nine moons.
Uh, I was going to colour this so it looks like earth, but I'm I'm actually I've decided not to. Uh, I'm going to just draw the symbol for earth. I'm going to that. Oops. Move it off. Okay, that went totally askew. Yes, I just washed my nib in water because this is acrylic ink and I don't want acrylic ink stuck to my nib. So I wash it in water and then I dry it thoroughly. And then I will leave it to air dry. Uh, let's grab my paintbrush again. This did not go according to plan. Let's do that. Muddy. And then let's do that. It's transparent ink, so I can actually write over the black and you can't really see it. Whoops. That's oh, very dark. Maddie, come on, stop playing silly beggars. There we go. Let's do that little arrow in brown. Make these two match over here. And then Yes, I'm going to grab my white acrylic and very carefully white out a couple of bits of acrylic ink that I got all over the place that don't need to be there. And that one, which was incorrectly placed. I don't actually need to do that, I just want to. Wait for that to dry. I'm really happy with this. It's come out really well. It's an interesting combination page. I've got some stuff up here I can fill in. I should have I should have put this here and then put about Juno over here, I think, but maybe I could paint some black and some stars. So it looks like she's in space. That would be interesting. Make it like its own little mini picture. Okay. Grab this. There we go. I think it would be interesting just to put some like shadows or whatever in here. Mm. 
maybe thicken up the edges of the plates. Maddie, for heaven's sake. Ooh, we could do the little bits of washi tape. It's not washi tape, obviously. But we could do the little bits of washi tape. Gold. I mean, in theory, I could do that gold, but not actually gold. It's silver. So maybe, I don't know if that metal is necessarily meant to be. It has to be silver because it's a certain type of metal or whatever, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is wet the area, and go back in with just a little bit of ink, and then go back in with a, a damp brush, blend the edges out a little bit. Gives it a bit of a steampunky vibe. I quite like. Oops. Yep, I'll have to paint that out in white as well in a minute. Ah. Oh. You want to journal or doodle? We have no idea what to journal or do. Yeah, just pick a research subject. If you don't know, because I, I want to do something, but I don't necessarily want to write about my day because I've got a five year for that. And it's like four lines. And sometimes I struggle to fill those four lines. But doing something like this is interesting. I'm learning something, you know, it's it's fun. Uh, uh. white again cover that bit up again I don't really need to it's just if I scan if I scan this as a like a digital download or something it just makes it easier to remove those bits that shouldn't be there what am i going to do with this corner this corner looks empty and i don't like that empty corner what should we do oh i know I know. Let's not assume that we know all about these things. Just because I know about these things doesn't mean other people necessarily know. Jupiter. Is. Named after the Roman king of the gods. Jupiter's moon is named after The gods dalliances and their oops their offspring the probe sent to observe 
the moons is named for his wife, Juno. So now we've got hmm, okay, Jupiter. Jupiter's uh, slip dexic. Jupiter's moons are named. Jupiter's moons are named after the gods' dalliances and their offspring. The probe sent to observe the moons is named for his wife. Probe. Wife. Juno. And then it goes, yes, that's right. They sent his wife to check out the girls. And then it links to Juno's mission. That's better. Still got a bit there that I need to deal with, but. Oh, I know. I could do. I know. You know, like your A6, when you have a blank page, you want to fill it with something, you never know what. Take about 15 minutes and learn something new. Yeah, exactly. Just all those weird questions that you ask yourself. Or like I do things like etymology. Not entomology, ent, ants. That's insects, although that's fascinating too. And I would probably do a page on entomology as well but etymology is the origin of words where does that word come from why do we say it like that why do we have read and read but they're said the same way you know stuff like that i love doing things like that it's because the origin of the word comes from different nationalities so originally they had different um ways of being said so the vikings pronounced r-e-a-d for example one way and somebody else in France pronounced R-E-A-D in a different way. So you ended up with two versions of read and read and they're linked, but they're not the same. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. That's just an example. That's not true at all. Herbs or food? Yeah, herbs, food, recipes, Katie. Recipes, decor. Don't feel like you have to have a... a recipe a book either do it in your a6 or another thing you could do is get little um cards little index cards a6 index cards keep a few in the back of your book and just you know write out recipes but do it nicely like this decorate it draw the ingredients that kind of thing that's something else you could do or draw or cut out and paste a picture of the herb on the front and write the write the name and then write the information of the on the back for what the herb is you know little cards of stuff that's a, an interesting way of doing it because then you don't have to feel like you have a right notebook i understand the feeling of needing to have the right notebook i get it i do one of the reasons i love this notebook is because it just feels right in my hand it just feels chunky and I like it. It feels like a journal. This feels like a sketchbook. This feels like a journal. <sighs> what am I going to do? Fill in that. Oh, yeah, I know. I was going to. Here we go. NASA logo. Since Juno belongs to NASA. And. That's all about the missions, which have all been NASA. So let's draw a NASA logo. Uh, about that big? Maybe a little bit smaller. NASA. Um, let's see the. That's a 
right across there. I don't have to do the logo exact. I'm just going to block in the letters. I'm not going to worry about getting the font right or anything. Oh, the size of the letters being right would be good though. Having them all fit, you know, things like that. Nah. There. The other good thing about doing things like this is like, if you're journaling about something, not so much if you're just writing about a day or something, but if you're journaling to work through something, you don't really want to stop at any point and have to, you know, but it's not something you can do five minutes of and then come back to it later. You want to do the whole thing in one go and get it out. But if you're doing something like, you're a tourist not interested in writing recipes, well, that's just weird. Um, if you're doing something like this, you don't have to worry about stopping. You can stop at any point and come back to it later. Okay. Oh, the, the Orbit logo needs to go like that. So. Uh, maybe I'll just write that in in white. I can't be. I can't be bothered. <laughs> too small. Too small. Too fiddly. I use my white. Now I know the NASA logo is blue and red, but I'm thinking I'm just gonna shade it in black. So it matches the rest of the page, because if I don't do it in the same color as everything else, it, I'm going to be really annoyed that it doesn't match. Because it will be the only thing. I mean, if I had a NASA sticker or something, that would be different. I would absolutely put a NASA sticker on there. But I don't have a NASA sticker. I'm drawing the logo. Oh, let's do the orange first. So, going up there, coming back down here, going up there, coming back down here. Oh, I don't need the bottle, I need this. Okay. You know what? I'm just going to paint over it like that because it's acrylic. When it dries, I can just put the white over the top. Dry, dry, dry. 
Drive fast, drive fast, drive fast. Whoops, wobbling about. Dry, dry, dry. Oh, I know what I can do while I'm waiting for that. The... Big. Red. Well, you don't have to do recipes, Katie. You could just look up anything you want. Literally anything you want. Hi, Moni. Must be getting close to tea time. Okay. Mm, got this big white thing going like that. Here we go. That's close enough. I mean, it, most people, unless they live in Florida, if you ask them what the NASA space logo looks like, they go, oh, don't know. I think it's red, white, and blue. Well, yeah, it's an American program, so duh. Right, there we go. I'm happy with that. A bit of fun, a bit of something different. And if you don't have a journal, guess what? You could do this in a sketchbook too. Just take more time over the sketches and things and less time over the writing. Uh, let's take a quick screenshot, no photograph, that's the word. Get a photo for the thumbnail. There we go, and we're done. Bit of something different. things away, put the brushes in the pots, pentacles, those can stay there. I was using those earlier. Pens can stay there. You need to go in there. You need to go back in my planner. You need to go in there. You need to go in there. You need to go away over there. In the pot, in the bag, in the bag. That goes on my journal. We can go up there. I know, Miss Maddie, I hear you. I can hear you. Goodness. Pecking me. 
Uh, where's the lid of that thing? Oh, it's on the floor. That's what fell down earlier. Uh, I'm going to empty that out later. Oh, there's the thingy for my brush. I put that back on. Those can stay there. These are great. These are kitchen things, lids, stretchy silicon lids. They're supposed to be for like putting over half used tins or pots or whatever to put in the fridge. I use them to cover my palettes so I don't get dog hair in my palettes. Top tip there for you. Uh. Let's go over there. These can go in the front of the book because I might play with those another time. And there we go. There's that. We are done. Thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in having either this page as it is or a better done version. Now that I've got it laid out, I know what to do. Uh, a better done version of it as a digital download, because I could literally just redo this on Strathmore paper and do it as a digital download for you guys if you want it. I have plans to do digital downloads in my Etsy shop of this kind of thing, information sheet type stuff, because this is what I enjoy doing <laughs> as digital downloads. I don't want to just be scanning lots of pet sketchbook pages and things. I do that for my patrons. I don't want to do it for Etsy. But I feel like this kind of stuff is a little bit more interesting. And then once I've got all the planets, I could do all the planets as a set, couldn't I? And they'd be cheap. You know, they'd, they'd be like digital download printables. And maybe with little bits of it as a, on a secondary page without the words, you know, just so you could cut and stick them or use them as collage or whatever. So let me know in the comments if you would like that and I will see about doing that because this is fun to do. I, I enjoy this. This is my downtime when I'm not working, not working. <laughs> oh, anyway, thanks for joining me, guys, and I will see you again next week, hopefully. Uh, don't have any current plans to be doing anything else or to not have internet like last week or last time not was it last week the week before i don't know um yeah not not technically thinking that this will be something that uh, it doesn't happen next week oh shut up be quiet stop rambling okay i'm i'm